Wow, this Onision investigation is so complex. It's been going for like 10 years. I don't even know where to start. Wait, who are you? It is I, your favorite human, Hunter Avalon here, back with another video. Give this video a like if you hate Onision. That's right, smash that like button like Onision smashes girls fresh out of 10th grade. Wait, what? People are trying to fund a documentary on Kickstarter, but Troll made one for free. What the fuck? Chris Hansen's interviewing a Tumblr blog? What the hell is going on? What do you mean everyone with less than 100 followers on Twitter is a Greg Alt? Excuse me, no. Billy the Fridge is not a predator. Oh, no, 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 no. I still don't know. It's all allegations, but there's a lot of them. No, it's so, real. Uh, it was straight up R. Kelly sex cult shit. And he's married to this girl who's now going trans male, female to male, which is super weird because that's kind of his thing, is that he wants women to dress like men. I guess to demean them, I don't know what this person's sexual orientation is, but she's in on it. But the thing is, he's literally uh, gonna end up being locked up by the FBI because he's a danger to said society. It's a bit ironic in the end. And she's done this sort of thing to a lot of people trying to make them look like the enemy, basically attacking people who are her own supporters. You had no business going into her inbox and, and asking those invasive questions. Old dude had no business showing up in her inbox, gassing her up about being doxxed and being <laughs> <laughs> in danger and then to come at me because I gave my opinion on it without having all the information. Fuck all of y'all. Like, who are you and what are you entitled to? Okay, before we get started, I'd like to take a minute to establish once again, this video is in no way pro Onision. I am not an Onision fan or supporter, and one doesn't need to be either of those things to sit back and enjoy the following trash fire. Onision has a well-documented history of degeneracy, one that spans back literal years. It is likely for this reason that Onision detractors would attract their own degenerate members to join in the rank of the hashtag D platform predators anti-Onision movement forming one of the most toxic communities on the website. It goes without saying that not all people who oppose Onision would be classified as an anti-O nutjob. I respect creators like Repsion, Edwin Generations, and guys like The Right Opinion who would likely classify themselves as being anti-Onision. However, when we are dealing with social media sites like Tumblr, Twitter, and Reddit, let's just say it was inevitable for some of the true intellectuals to enter and deface the movement. For creators and fans alike who have no idea what I'm talking about, let me introduce you to the reason why your videos on Onision, that are currently holding your income afloat, do so well. No, sweetie, you need to understand what PTSD is and have some respect for victims rather than incessantly harassing them to try to get a reaction so you could make 3K on a YouTube video like Nick is. Fuck you. Yeah, we're working on it. Nick's channel will be deleted. No, Onision is making poor choices. Leave these girls the fuck alone. Period. Stop talking to them, stop harassing them, and just fuck off. Tax evasion, reckless endangerment, child neglect, fraud. Good thing he filmed it too. Looks like your case is based on nothing. Sorry, the evidence speaks for itself, kid. Troll projects trolling onto an honest person because that's the only defense they have now. Another day on the internet. PTSD, look it up and shut up. Don't speak on a topic when you have no clue what it means. To go to the hospital, you say that to Onision's victims who are receiving threats and rape threats daily from anonymous insane incels on the internet trying to get a reaction out of them so you can make money off of YouTube is helping a real predator and you're cheering it on. She apologized and intimidating world doesn't care because he loves attacking her and making money off of it. He started this himself, Oreo did not know handle she this has right at all. You Whether don't get or not, to exploit he intended that for a smear he brought a lot of to support a rapist and, and call the moral for high ground! Sorry, by questioning Nick. her, and then leaking DMs rather than telling Sarah his concerns, which then brought more people out of the woodwork to shit on her. I hope he realizes from this experience not to do that, but I'm not holding my breath. We'll see. Okay, in case you weren't looking at the screen, those were all from the exact same person picked up by my spam filter in rapid succession. I've never seen any anything like this kind of dedication before.
before, and I'm not sure if I should be impressed or horrified. Before filming this video, I traversed my way onto the r slash Onision subreddit, where I saw many posts that piqued my interest. Comments like, if you're defending a guy like Onision, you're probably a lot like him, seem to be a mainstay for the anti onision It's their generic cop-out for anyone who attempts to question part of their intricate story. Don't think something adds up? Well, you must fuck kids. You think Chris Hansen might be milking this for money? Well, he must have had you take a seat at some point in your life, you predator. Comments like this one right here are really indicative of the wider community issue. I can almost guarantee that anyone who's had a disagreement with the anti -O's has had some shit like this spammed into their mentions, even if it could have been a misunderstanding. This post right here indicates a woman is having nightmares about Onision content. She has never directly contacted him, but was influenced in her formative years, whatever the fuck that means. She's having repeating nightmares where Onision has come to confront her and many of the anti-O's in person. So she's essentially saying that she's having nightmares akin to what you'd find on a fucking Twitter timeline. These people need some serious help. When John Swan released his video and collaboration with The Right Opinion, explaining why Onision's actions are probably not in violation of any law pertaining to grooming, be it state or federal, many anti-O accounts lost their minds, as it kind of spit in the face of their OK Groomer movement that's targeting Onision. One fan took it upon themselves to say that what Onision did is illegal, and do you know what their evidence for this was? Well, I don't know either, this was the whole post. John's in-depth discussion and citation of Washington State and federal law are well invalid because, well, I said so. And if that's not a characteristic of the entire movement, well, I don't know what is. One Reddit user created an entire post dedicated to why Onision can be a bad person without actually breaking a law. And this is a point that nobody is arguing. Like, no shit, someone could be a bad person without violating state or federal law. This is YouTube, for fuck's sake. We see this shit all the time. Jeffree Star and I'm Alex are horrible people for a multitude of reasons, but that doesn't mean they should be in jail for every single one of them. This is a moral versus legal argument, but I'm spending way too much time having this educational debate. Fuck that, forget that. The reason that we're talking about this specific post is that this Leah woman claims to be writing an entire essay on why this is the case, and that's fucking hilarious. I really wish there was some way we could speed up time to see if she actually- Oh my god, wait, we have it. Wait, that's the essay. It's on screen right now. Someone has actually written a literal essay in response to the criticism. This is fucking ridiculous. Clayton was hanged, wrote, If you think the anti-O community is a bunch of SJWs and assume that it's all blind hatred, Clayton was hanged genuinely fucking hopes that your loved one or yourself end up in an abusive relationship, and he thinks you're worthless, useless, mentally retarded piece of shit. He also asks that you commit not alive in uh, Minecraft, of course. Let me be honest, before we continue, this dude is a minority of a minority. Even the anti -O's saw this dude as too hardcore for their style. <laughs> Anyways, he continues by saying, I'm so over these abuser apologists. I've been abused before. My god, these fucking special ed ass cunts. I fucking hate these people. I'm talking about that goddamn video by CDB channel or whatever the fuck his name is and the fucking comments. God, Clayton wishes they'd catch the coronavirus and die from that shit, seriously. Okay, okay, so let's be honest. This one was probably some kind of troll. Oh fuck, oh wait, look at his post history. Oh God, it's consistent. Oh God, he wrote under r slash unpopular opinion that people who don't believe in cyberbullying should have a family member commit it's suicide? Oh my god, oh no, oh fuck. If you enter the various Onision Tumblr blog, you'll find comments such as this one right here that is attempting to collaborate with the most well-known members of the anti-O community to create an anti-O inspired fan fiction. That's right, we're now creating fan fictions for these sexual deviant allegations. What the fuck? is this? But this begs a bigger question. The first statement just picked apart a random anti-O account at the lower level, but who are the bigger anti-Os? Well, besides Shiloh, who else is creating and cultivating the stereotype? I'd love to sit and talk to you about how some random in my comment section declared that my opinion on Shiloh was irrelevant because I am quote-unquote in my 20s. Like, I don't know, nearly every victim involved in the fucking allegations. Or about how I only had to make a video telling people I'm not a doctor. 
fucks her because she quote unquote hurt my feelings. Or how people claim any kind of questions or criticism is me attacking an Onision victim. Or even how calling out a massive fucking hypocrite would somehow be wrong if she suffered from PTSD. Listen, I'd really love to do that, but I have to stay on subject. So I've enlisted the help of a few friends to do that for me. Bro, you go after a teenager to ask her why she needs money? You probably have no life. And you said skeptical when you met suspicious. You only need to put the word Onision in the title of your video and make money by using her story. Many YouTubers like yourself can produce videos about Onision because strong women like Shiloh and Sarah have the courage to speak up. If you want to talk about morals, you owe her money. She gave you something to talk about for two months. But all these YouTubers make videos against Onision do not care about the well-being of these young women at all. But the truth is, they do have a very large moral obligation to them. You can't make a video about the anti-O's without talking about their enabler, Chris Hansen. I'm pretty sure this guy is one of the biggest reasons that people have been analyzing the current available information and theorizing Onision will be going to jail. Chris Hansen thrusted himself into the Onision story during his big YouTube comeback, where he tried to recapture the success of the content he created for Dateline NBC. His work as a television host had become infamous among the community. Clips of To Catch a Predator found a home on YouTube in such an explosive way that it rivals the success the show The Office found on Netflix. To be blunt about it, this was kind of a big deal. 911, what are you reporting? Hi, uh, there's a person who's been stalking me online and they just showed up to my house. Okay, and what do we know his name at all? It's Chris Hansen. The difference between what Chris was doing on his television show and what he's been doing on his YouTube channel is really significant. It's no secret that Chris didn't do almost any of the back-end work on the television show when he was hosting. Chris was quite literally the guy who walked out and spoke to predators. The legwork itself was done by teams of professionals who often were aided by the help of their local police department. The Antios don't seem to realize that it's quite literally just Chris Hansen investigating Onision. And and not NBC's entire cast of To Catch a Predator. Today, Chris Hansen's operations are practically a one-man show, with his only associate being a sketchy lawyer, and his now former associate, Vincent Nicotra, you may know him as a serial crybaby, vicious doxer, and copyright abuser, who's now apparently suing Chris Hansen for harassment. <laughs> <laughs> this this is fine. Chris's current business model is comparable to an alternate reality, where co-chairman John York of the San Francisco 49ers took the field single-handedly in the Super Bowl to face off against the entirety of the Kansas City Chiefs. It's just a disaster. Naturally, this caused some major issues for the case. Do you feel like he's just kind of running his YouTube channel? I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know anymore. I don't trust anybody to help uh, us in this situation uh, yeah. at this point. I, tr I don't trust anyone. That's why, that's specifically why I had them send me the laptop back so I can get it to the proper people. Chris Hansen mishandled the laptop filled with evidence by passing it off to the mentally unwell Vincent Nagotra. Vincent was in possession of the laptop for literal months when the greater community and Sarah herself believed it was with the FBI. This lackadaisical fuck up could have quite frankly botched the entire investigation as we know it, considering the vast majority of the critical evidence that we are publicly aware of from the investigation exists on that laptop. Court cases are not YouTube exposed videos. Chain of custody exists, and this incident could have actually made the evidence inadmissible in court. And if he didn't make it easy enough for Onision's lawyers to get this laptop thrown the fuck out, Vincent actually publicly stated that he planned to copy the hard drive, which is an admission that he intended on tampering with this vital evidence. Only time will tell if this contributes to a disappointing showing, implying this situation ever makes it to criminal court in the first place. Or we're having a hard time finding people that are actual victims. But a fuck up of this magnitude hasn't stopped Chris Hansen. In fact, Hansen has almost exclusively covered this story for months until very recently, which we will also be talking about. Chris has interviewed various victims like Sarah and Shiloh. He's also interviewed creators like Blair White and Repsion. What's funny to me is this situation started out with a lot of momentum. Chris was bringing light to the Onision allegations, which were getting significantly more exposure than ever before, which would prove to be a good and bad thing as we know. Massive creators were joining to create one of the biggest 
biggest crossovers on the website, and he was really pushing the fact that an FBI investigation was a real possibility. And then he kept doing that. Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Thanks so much for uh, joining us tonight. I appreciate it very much. We're gonna continue this evening on our investigation of Onision. And then he kept doing that. Good evening, everyone. Chris Hansen here, and you are having a seat with me on my YouTube channel. And then he kept doing that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. To the point where the quality control of the guests has completely bottomed out, and we are now cashing in on interviewing fucking Tumblr blogs. That's not a joke. We're interviewing fucking Tumblr blogs. We have gone from interviewing affected parties and notable YouTubers all the way down the rabbit hole to Tumblr blogs. I could tell he was just completely hollow as a human being like there's just nothing inside of him there's he whatever the vital component it is that makes a human being he just doesn't have it in the following episode chris teased an update to the quote unquote fbi investigation and instead he delivered holly hayes Holly is a special character to this investigation. If you didn't realize that this was a cash grab before the stream, I'm pretty sure you're about to become very aware of that right now. When Chris Hansen asked Holly how she first became aware of who Onision was, Holly replied back by saying that she saw him in a thumbnail once in 2011, and this practically sent shivers down her spine. I kid you not, to every hair on the, on my body stood up on end I just immediately got vibes of like there's something so so wrong with this person and every every since then or ever since then I've been following his career she followed this up by saying it's like when you check someone's temperature by feeling their forehead Holly said that she could feel the darkness resonating off of him like you know when someone has a fever and you can you put your you put your uh your hand up to the forehead and you could feel the heat coming off them. It was like that, but darkness. Jesus fucking Christ! I don't know if Chris was reluctant to screen guests or what his thought process was if he even had one, but Holly went on to say some incredible things. The most insane one was where she insinuated that Onision now has confirmed kills. On the more severe side, I have literally had people starve themselves to death because of Onision and his rhetoric on YouTube. Now, when you say starve yourself to death, people didn't actually die. No, they died. You have cases where somebody died of, in relation to starvation. Yep. We're off OK Groomer now. We're not calling him a predator anymore. Apparently now Onision is Charles fucking Manson, and just watching his videos alone has caused people to starve to death. I fact-checked this information because Holly stated there was evidence on her blog, which is literally just filled with fucking user-submitted posts that are now plopped on the page and apparently believed just because someone typed it. Why use evidence at all when we have her fucking Tumblr blog? What I did find was a post titled, He Murdered murdered my friend, saying that Onision was responsible for the original poster's friend's death, who unfortunately overdosed after posting a suicide note to Facebook that notably didn't directly source Onision. I do feel bad for the poster and this wasn't placed here to be a punchline. I'm sure the poster of this comment genuinely was just looking for answers and maybe landed on Onision as a source of closure. But what is the fucking punchline is that this Holly woman who was cited as a reliable source on Chris Hansen's livestream is literally claiming that this is evidence Onision's actions are literally killing people. Are you fucking kidding me? But when Chris is faced with an outrageous allegation, what do you think he does? You have cases where somebody died in relation to starvation. Yep. Tell me about that case. Um, so the sister of the girl who died came onto Tumblr to announce her death because she was like fairly popular in like I guess the eating disorder community. Well, he just lets them keep fucking talking. Not, oh, can I get a screenshot? Not, oh, what's the source on that? This guy's a fucking scam artist. He's literally ripping you people off. He will platform a Tumblr blog with 90 Twitter followers just to take your money. And for that reason, I'm dubbing Chris Hansen the Infowars of Predator Investigations. But if you've heard him called something similar, odds are it's not because of this and actually because of one of his more recent streams on a different subject entirely. Chris Hansen is here to tell you about how to be 
safe during a global pandemic. No, I'm not joking. The Dateline NBC guy who is known for taking down predators is now taking down pathogens. Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen and tonight I don't have to tell you that the coronavirus is gripping this country, this world in a way uh, a pandemic has never gripped it in my lifetime. Chris Hansen decided to interview a company who claims to have pandemic ending bleeding edge technology. It's a good thing that our retired television host was here to convey this information as it couldn't possibly be a cash grab. You know, after at the time of recording, nearly 800 people were pronounced dead in Italy, sharply raising the death percentage in the area. Surely this righteous Onision investigator wasn't just firing up a stream to make a quick buck off a tragedy. <laughs> but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's introduce ourselves to the company. The company, of course, is named Nano Vapor Bio. <laughs> the fuck? Nano Vapor Bio- <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Nanovapor Biotech has claimed to create something that can destroy and suppress the coronavirus quickly for up to 70 total days on literally any surface. We've, uh, our company, Nanovapor uh, uh, Biotech, has come up with a solution. Um, we have a non-toxic, water-based, no-residue product that can be applied to any surface. And not only does it immediately kill the virus, but incredibly Incredibly, our research is showing that it will kill the virus that comes into contact with that service for up to 70 to 90 days. 70 to 90 days. And if that sounds too good to be true, well, that's because it probably is. This might just be pessimistic of me to say, but I doubt the people who have found the solution to the ongoing pandemic would be paying the former television host Chris Hansen for an ad read. And I use the word paid very loosely because I'm assuming this by the literal ad read here, and I'm sure this guy got some sort of revenue. So this is technology that, for instance, was used to clean a fuel tank of some sort using this, and correct me if I'm wrong, dispersion type system, but it also has an application to disperse and, and effectively use um, antibacterials, antiviral chemicals to kill this virus for 70 to 90 days. So this is nanotechnology. If this was in fact a paid promotion, Chris did not disclose it anywhere in the description or his various social media posts about the subject. This is something that can't really be proven. However, I wouldn't put it past him since he's literally promoting OnlyFans accounts for $60 on Cameo. Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators to catch a predator and have a seat with Chris Hansen. I'm gonna need everyone to have a seat because Honey Milk has finally created an OnlyFans Daily uploads and direct communication. That's onlyfans.com slash hun3yxmilk. There is nothing this guy wouldn't do for money. I'd like to give a big shout out to Nicholas Diorio. Chris Hansen wants you to know that the coronavirus is here, and he's going to continue to tell it to take a seat until OJ Simpson can keep playing golf. Hey, Twitter world, yours truly. Well, we got to finish our round of golf today. They said they were going to close the golf course at one point. I'm just saying, and if you do close them, you better open up some insane asylum. Get me a bed, because I know if I can't play golf for the next month, I would go crazy. <laughs> because the last thing anyone here wants is for an OJ Simpson that loses control, but I digress. Chris has been pandemic posting for the last few days, collecting some Twitter points and notoriety through the situation. And to nobody's surprise, he's been heavily criticized for it. Some anti-Onision accounts are reaching DEFCON levels never before seen, as they panic to evade Chris Hansen blocking them after criticizing him only to say that what he's done for the Onision investigation has been uh, stellar so far. Well, I'm sure I would call it stellar. Join me tonight for a special edition on my YouTube channel, Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. We'll take you to the front lines in the battle against a predator known as COVID-19. If this sounds ridiculous to you, that's because it actually is. If these people sound like they were born yesterday, that's because they actually were. The Nano Vapor Biotech website was literally registered from GoDaddy.com one day before the stream with Chris Hansen. I mean, let's be honest here for a second. Nano Vapor Biotech sounds like they just took four sciency words and slapped them together. I don't know what kind of promises that we were expecting to see kept here. Is this some kind of fucking joke? So this is nanotechnology. This is a, a molecule that forms these bonds that uh, when sprayed on a surface using proprietary nanotechnology, perfectly safe. You can even put this on your hands and your hands would kill the virus for up to 24 hours. So it's a very safe product. So this is nanites, courtesy of Ray Palmer. 
It's the nanotech. Well, let's look at their Facebook page because we'll probably get the answers that we're looking. Oh shit, it's got one like and it looks like it's just been created. Oh, well, okay, maybe that's not terrible. Maybe the Twitter, oh Jesus Christ, they have less than five followers. Well, when you check out their website, you can go see their medical paper showcasing their medical research. And what you'll find is some very conclusive stuff. The research by NanoVapor was done on site at private medical clinic. Yes, this product works so well that the clinic that performed the test doesn't even want their fucking name associated with it. The overwhelming scientific consensus that they were trying to sell you on that this is a very good product can, it's so effective that they can prove it in only two pages with large type font in a PDF for a study that was done in private medical clinic. Fuck my mouth, that's amazing! A quick Google search of the time of recording shows that apparently the solution to this global pandemic hasn't been talked about in a single article, and the nanovapor bioware hasn't been cited in any credible medical outlet. Now to be clear here, there has been some misinformation spread that I'd like to clarify for a second. Chris Hansen is not selling a cure to the great sneeze to the anti-O nut jobs. This product is only on the market for businesses like airlines and hospitals. As far as I've seen, there's no way to get your hands on this product directly if you're the average consumer. To compare this to Alex Jones is a bit loose, but I understand why people are saying that this sounds like a crackpot infomercial. But it also has an application to disperse and, and effectively use um, antibacterials, antiviral chemicals to kill this virus for 70 to 90 days. So this is nanotechnology. <laughs> I don't think I need to tell the vast majority of my audience that Chris Hansen has gone from being a beloved TV personality to an internet grifter pretty quickly. I'm sure the guys who have seen this situation in the background over the past few months had some sort of an idea what this actually was. I just think it's really funny that I'm looked at as a villain, or even creators like Cecile McFly who have produced hours of documentary level content. She's now been called an Onision alt for assisting me in pointing out the many less than satisfactory actions that Shiloh was performing that could have damaged the Onision investigation. It's just funny that guys like Chris Hansen, who may have caused irreversible damage to the investigation and siphoned money out of these girls in the process for months at a time, who's clearly only driven by monetary gain and trying to recapture his fame, yeah, that guy's the good guy. That's a guy who's a hero to the cause. I don't know, it's just pretty fucked to me. So this just got like really fucking serious in a more lighthearted video. So now here's Wavy Websurf explaining why we need to Stop drawing Onision. <clears throat> Greg is really only doing this for attention. He knows he's a shitbag, and he knows there's no redemption for him. He's in this for people to look at him no matter how bad he makes himself look. So don't draw Greg. Putting effort into making him art, even unflattering art, is what he wants. He wants us to have him on his mind. He wants to take our time and effort. Even if you draw Greg as a disgusting little gremlin, he's still enjoying it because you're putting effort into drawing him. Classic Reddit post there. Hold up, we gotta go back. Have, have a seat over there. I wanna make money. Have, have a seat over there. I wanna make money. Okay, back to serious because I can't possibly omit this segment. On March 26th, Onision finally attempted to get Chris Hansen on for an interview. This was after he denied Chris the first time by asking for an absurd amount of money and called the police on Chris when he flew across the country to knock on his door. Onision said he wanted to do an interview on his terms and he opened up his channel to Chris where they could have a conversation. My thought process here is that this is an interview that Chris has shown incredible interest in. As a journalist, I'm sure with intent an obstacle wouldn't stop him from having that conversation. There is the thought that this could be a setup of some kind, but as long as Chris's points are valid and it's Onision who's deflecting, there should be no issue. Well, that wasn't good enough for Chris, who eventually gave this statement, where he manages to get confused, thinking Onision was asking him to go live on OnlyFans.com. This probably won't come as a shock to most of you, but I will not be going on Greg James Onision's The YouTube Psycho Brad from 
from Washington State's members only paid porn channel. I know he's trying to have a stunt to make you all watch and tune in, but it's just not gonna happen. I still want to have him answer questions in an interview on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen, something he is not likely to do because he doesn't want to answer the tough questions about how he groomed and exploited multiple young women and how his negligence contributed to the near death of his two-year-old child, among many other things, and police investigations and FBI investigations now underway. So, I renew my offer. Greg, James, Onision, YouTube Psycho Brad, anytime you wanna do a real interview on a real show, let me know. Until then, well, I guess you'll continue the stunts. So Chris comes hard saying he won't go on Onision's channel and if he wants to have a real interview after dodging, it will have to be on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. He also talks a huge game saying that this is about the victims and justice will be served. And remember one other thing, a lot of people want to see justice in this case. The investigation come to an end. It took better than a decade to bring Weinstein and Epstein to justice. We will get justice here, and the victims will continue to be heard. Okay, so first of all, accusers. Let's call a spade a spade here. But this is a lot of talk from someone who doesn't seem to want this interview very bad right now. Anyways, this likely wouldn't have been a big deal until Onision actually agreed to go on to Chris's show with one request. He has to demonetize it. So Chris said this is about getting justice. Chris is under fire being called a grifter for basically everything you've just seen in the last 20 minutes of this video. All eyes are on him, and Onision knew this. So all Chris had to do was say yes and the pressure goes back on Onision. So what does he say? Well he says no. He gives a statement that could essentially boil down to, we don't associate with terrorists on this YouTube channel, as he continues to say that no conditions will be considered and this is about the truth and being held accountable. His mentions get loaded by this point because the only request Onision made was to not monetize his interview, which really is a small price to pay considering you flew across the country to knock on his door for content. It's a small price to pay when you're involved with nanovapor biotech and have been clearly milking this investigation with no results for as long as you have. Naturally, he realized this and caves after a half hour, deciding to demonetize the interview, which means that everything should be scheduled and the next clip I'm going to show you should be a clip from this episode. Wrong! Chris Hansen had his lawyer alert Onision that the interview will now be pre-recorded all of a sudden, which makes absolutely no fucking sense. And this pissed off Onision, who leaked the conversation, saying if he tried to pre-record it, he'd stream it and show everyone the proper context, because of course he would. Why wouldn't he? Keemstar confirmed his interaction with Onision that when he interviewed him, the only catch was he couldn't edit the final product. Why? Because people can cut it up and take his narrative out of context, which is exactly what he was afraid of here. The really good news about pursuing predators for so many years is that you pretty much know what a predator is going to do and say before he says or does it. They live in a parallel universe where they hurl false allegations at their accusers, law enforcement, investigative journalists. They also get off on re-victimizing their vulnerable victims, such as the case with the YouTube psycho Brad in Washington State. It's become clear to me now that there's no way to do an interview with him, at least at this point, without him trying to exploit a live version of that interview. Given the fact that he's made animated videos where he blows his brains out and real videos where he exposes poses himself and makes horrible statements targeting his victims, I don't think that's responsible. I don't think society in general needs to see it, and I don't think his victims in particular need to see it. In fact, his victims have come to me asking me not to do it. So in the meantime, it appears there will be no interview unless he can actually sit down and do a real interview where he actually answers to the allegations. And there are a lot of them. It's insane what he's been saying. It's hard to watch. I honestly try not to. In the meantime, I'll remind you of something I said a while back. I was a reporter before he was born. I'll be a reporter after he goes to prison. Hopefully, where he won't have a lot of access to making those videos on the internet. Okay, so now he's going to say that he can't do it live because Onision is going to exploit the fact that it's live? Excuse me? And he's saying now all of a sudden he won't interview Onision because the victim said so? By the way, hold on to that for a few moments. We're going to need it. What 
the fuck? So you're telling me that Chris is so bad at his job that a live debate wouldn't be fair on his own show? How does one exploit the fact that a live stream is live? It's literally a live fucking discussion. Are you afraid he's going to groom you on camera? If he doesn't answer your questions and he tries to deflect, you can just hang up. It's literally your show. Nobody would fault you for that. You're saying that you need to be in control of the narrative offline to get a fair interview. And I say bullshit. This is why nobody trusts mainstream media. Your example you chose for why it needs to be pre-recorded is just you talking about Onision's edited and pre-recorded videos. It literally doesn't fucking make sense. But what makes this go from insane to absurd is that Chris was willing to ambush Onision in his own home for the upper hand, and he wouldn't consent to a live debate on an even playing field. He still argued the only way to have a fair conversation is to stack the narrative in his own favor. Chris is scared to interview Onision. Don't forget this. And as it turns out, so is the rest of the community who makes videos on him. He also basically lied before this Twitter video went up. Onision dropped the emails where he literally said fuck it and agreed to do it pre-recorded with no catch hours before this Twitter video went up, making that entire last two minutes completely irrelevant because Onision was actually willing to sit down with Chris Hansen. I've heard the going rumor that Chris's lawyer middleman just didn't check his email, but for Give me if I'm inclined not to believe him. So just to summarize, Chris said he wouldn't go on Onision's channel, and then Onision compromised. Chris said he wouldn't do a live stream, and Onision compromised. To say Onision has played games here is wrong, and he compromised far more than Chris did in this situation. It's just a fact. Naturally, Chris dodging this interview pissed Onision off, and he opened that request up to literally any YouTuber who makes content on him. Do you know which YouTuber decided to step up, come in, to the guy who they have literally been talking about constantly for the past two to ten years? None of them. Blair White didn't make it that night. Creators like Mike and Actor didn't show up. iNabber and iMalix were not there. The Right Opinion, Repzilla, Jay Aubrey, Creepshow Art, none of them made it. People who have made thousands of dollars and created tons of videos talking about Greg's life didn't show up. In fact, most of them were watching from the crowd. We are talking about literal Onision historians to the craft, some who are actually my friends, and I'm sorry, but even Repsion, someone who asked a question from Twitter, and I really don't want to rag on you, man. I really don't. I know he took you to court, and I know you were advised not to go on. But dude, you uploaded a video the very next fucking day on his OnlyFans website talking about him. So you can do a sponsored video in collaboration with Raycon earbuds, but you can't say shit to his face? Man, I'm not buying this. I also contacted The Right Opinion, and dude, I feel bad because this wasn't going in the video, but it hits so fucking different now. He says in the first few minutes that Onision offered to give him new information that could have vindicated a few claims. In fact, even Onision wants me to make this video on him, though I'm not sure it will be exactly what he hoped for. He did contact me stating that if I'm interested, he can offer evidence to exonerate him of certain claims. However, over the last couple months, I've really grown an aversion to such private interactions. I'm not going to be a YouTuber's shield when they have more than enough platform to defend themselves already. Anything that someone wants me to present in public, they can present it themselves. Today's video is going to be a look at as much published and the attempt to understand what that says about the person in question. Bro, he didn't even fucking listen to it. Dude, I get what you're saying. You don't want to be the platform he uses to defend himself, but you're okay with making a video without even hearing what he fucking says? Really? Come on, dude. I don't think it was an accident either that your segment on whether Onision is going to jail wasn't read by you. It's just interesting that the most controversial take in the series comes from John Swan's mouth. I'm getting the feeling that people are feeding the mob what they want to hear instead of making actual commentary on an issue. But I'm sure everyone's going to say, that's okay because it's Onision. I'm not the one doing it. It's not me. Apparently, if you close your ears and ignore it, the problem with your video script doesn't exist. Moving on. All right, now I actually have a question from Repsion that somebody asked me to ask Bitch, you. Bitch, show the fuck up. Well, he's, up. he's not here, but they wanted me to ask you this. It's actually a <laughs> screenshot from him. He says, what I want is someone to address his tweet about if you don't report sexual abuse instantly you are as bad as a rapist 
That needs to be asked in an interview. This is me asking it. It's like when people cover Onision, their brains go on autopilot and regurgitate what the person said before them. Let me be clear. You're not required to debate every topic you make a video on. And some people are naturally not good debaters. But the fact that not even a single one attempted to interview him makes this look a little sketchy. I personally spent $100 out of my own pocket to hear Onision talk before I I set out to make this video. I'm someone who believes as many bases as possible should be covered, especially when information is being presented to you in a sensitive situation. I just want to remind some of you that we aren't in a YouTube drama realm right now. People's lives are at risk here. So many people these days play it safe in regards to their career. So many people are terrified of the audience they themselves have cultivated. I'm not saying that I know how this story is going to end. And I'm not saying that Onision is innocent of all charges. But so help me God, if this does turn around and one of you have the audacity to say something like, people should make this a learning experience for next time, go fuck yourself. I'm getting it in now. Go fuck yourself. If someone takes a long look at how passive you people are and comes to the conclusion that something here is being hidden, I'd have to say I'm inclined to agree with them. The other thing that stands out to me is that Greg is about as brave in person as you'd expect. He had his chance today to talk to me, to explain his side of the story, to defend himself, but he chose not to do it. That's gonna be a statement for now, I guess. One of the accusers, Ayella, put out a statement saying this. No one should criticize Chris Hansen for not doing the interview with Onision. After Chris agreeing to do the interview with donations turned off, Greg posted a YouTube video about how he made Chris bend to his will and submit. These actions clearly indicate ill intent. It is 100% completely fucking irrelevant what Onision uploaded to his channel. In Ayella's hypothetical, it doesn't doesn't matter what someone intends it to be. If your arguments are sound, there is no way for him to sabotage the interview and make Chris look any worse than he does right now. Not only that, an interview did happen that night, and it didn't go at all like Ayala explained. The unsung heroes who let Onision on their platform were the Ralph Retort and Dick Masterson. Yeah, that's right. Not Blair, not a YouTuber with 50 plus Onision videos either. The fucking Ralph Retort and Dick Masterson got it. She knew damn well. I was very mean to her like Meg Griffin, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Freedom like oh. dirt, they stick to you like mud, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we weren't technically allowed to have vaginal stuff, but I was like weaseling my way around it by putting my hand in front of my junk. Wait, why were you not technically allowed to? <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a very like, if you give me an inch, I will find a way to make it work. I'm a very, <laughs> that's called gentle I'm, tip, man. We got, we I got am, names for all these things back in the 90s. Right. You know I'm that a, fucking game on easy. I'm a, this, yeah, I mean, this, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That Hanson wanted to do, uh, Ralph is doing, Ethan Ralph is doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, this what, is, like, this is, uh, if Chris Hansen ever wanted to stop a predator, this was the interview to have. Yeah, I don't, you, yeah. I mean, it, according to him, it was. Ob yeah. Yeah, according to yeah. him, it was. If you take yeah. everything that Chris Hansen is saying is true, and you don't think you're a complete fucking liar, and you're just making this up, this is the interview that you're the one that he wanted to stop. You're the one that he should yeah, have wanted to I, stop. You just I, bitched out. I can't understand but that. His, his excuse is that the victim, the alleged victims like have feelings, so. While Onision was on the kill stream for a full three hours, he answered every question with a full detailed response. He answered questions from people who sent in donations and he took random callers where many of them were anti os who intended to challenge him I, yeah, this is ahead. on the topic that we're talking about repsing way back in the day the last time i tried to get him on a show he spammed the chat saying oh i want to i want to interview interview me interview me and then he deleted all okay. his shit, all, the, all the requests to interview and i said okay well fucking interview and he's like oh i never said that i never said i would all want right to come on me. come on so then i'm get still it over with face. i don't fucking care cunt <laughs> then why are you here dipshit then why I'm are you here Okay, so you you want to hear what you have to right, say? Look, you, you don't want to hear. Let him hear. Listen. Listen. Don't don't hear. Throughout this interview, he remained composed the entire time and went into extra details on subjects that hadn't been explored before in this capacity. Due to the nature of the interview, he sounded really good at some of the parts, and in other parts, he did not. Now, what about uh, the DMCAing? That's another thing right. people have brought up. So oh. there's this. Yeah, now, and from what I've seen, you have been a little out of pocket with the DMCA thing. That's just my. 
personal view on it, but if you if you want to give your own, go ahead. I agree. What the fuck? Why are you flagging everyone? People fight it, and I know for a fact that they're using it in a way that is not fair. Uh, I say you have seven days, and if you want to get a copyright strike, so be it. Or they can talk to YouTube directly. YouTube reviews it, and most every single time, YouTube's like, we don't know if it's fair use or not, so we're just gonna go with the person who's appealing this, and then give them their video back anyway. So, and then when I say give them it back, I mean they don't even take it down. So the, pe the, people, it. Yeah. the people who are taken down, typically YouTube actually reviewed the video, and they say, yeah, this is a fucking, this is stealing. So, but because it wasn't a definitive blowout where Onision essentially admits to a crime, the Antios deny it was any of the things I just said it was. If you came away from Ralph's interview saying it was anything other than a success, you're fucking crazy and you're lying to yourself. If you're complaining that the people who interviewed Onision were in educated on the situation, then that's your favorite YouTuber's fault. The fact that a matchup like this, that was, in my opinion, doomed to fail, went so well is an embarrassment to the various content creators who cover Onision and honestly a kill shot to Chris Hansen's credibility. Dude, you're done in this case. Nicholas DiOrio, you're on the kill stream. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on? I just wanted to say this has been a uh, really good live stream. I, I feel like all the antios who are saying that Keemstar did a terrible job, which I don't think was fair at all. I, I think those guys are going to have to uh, eat their words here because this was uh, a fantastic stream on a platform that you wouldn't have really expected. <laughs> Dude, fuck the anti -O's. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if you go out and say anything like, oh, you know what, I think uh, Ralph brought up some good points, they'll just go, ah, you fuck kids then. That's every disagreement with you fucking people. Oh, you know, I think these guys drive a nice bargain. Oh, well, have you had a seat with Chris Hansen? No, I haven't. You know they said that to Aiden Projects, a 900k 15-year-old YouTuber? He, uh, they didn't know his age, obviously, but he said, uh, I disagree with Chris Hansen, and they called him a predator. So apparently he's the uh, only 15-year-old pedophile. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what we've got going on here. Uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic oh, fucking uh, time. Dude, Chris Hansen's a fucking joke, okay? Honestly, he started out by bringing on accusers, which was, okay, that's one thing. Then it became people who just went to Onision's house. That was, okay, that's another thing. Now we're all the way down to people who have 90 followers on Twitter, who get high on Xanax and show up because they have a <laughs> fucking Tumblr blog where they say Oni Onision's fucking massacred people like Charles Manson like that that's where we are right now that's that's oh, where this okay is. okay but Nick you gotta admit Chris Hansen as an entertainer pretty good he, he pretty good he does dude he's a fucking grifter I love when he entertained everybody by bringing on that fucking scam for the coronavirus that was my favorite entertaining <laughs> thing he's that? ever done people, people were saying he was oh, selling it was uh, he Nana, selling I have a chance? video I, I'm making a video on this I don't want to spoil Chris Hansen thing. for being a good entertainer I you can't take he's, that I respect him for being a grifter you know what Chris Hansen is Chris Hansen. Uh, Dateline NBC is Dateline NBC. He had teams of fucking specialist people who were hunting down these predators, and he was working with the police department. Dude, you're just working with some guy who looks like he's in his 70s because he's an alcoholic, and now he's running this entire operation by himself. No wonder it's a fucking disaster. No wonder chain of custody is gonna fuck the operation. No wonder this thing has gone right off the fucking rails. Was he actually selling uh, shit, though? Like, actually selling Okay, all right, to be 100% fair to him. Uh, you can't buy it. It was for hospitals and stuff like that. But he was obviously paid to do the ad read. This fucking nano vapor biotech. But like the website that he was like linking back to was made the day before the fucking stream. If you looked at their fucking research, it was only two pages. They said they did a 70 day trial in a clinic called Private Medical Clinic. The clinic that it was tested in didn't even want to have their fucking name attached to it. It was a disaster. They claimed that uh, if you spray it on your hands, it killed the coronavirus for 24 hours. They claimed that it, if you spray it on a surface, It'll, uh, anyway, if you spray it on his surface, it'll kill the coronavirus for 70 to 90 days. Apparently, Wait, Chris Hansen, the, the Chris Hansen, yeah, Chris Hansen, the fucking TV show host. Oh he had the cure to the coronavirus. Dude, oh they, they, the guy found the way to fit to, to stop this whole time. He had the cure and he didn't tell yeah. us. Fuck. Dude, dude, yeah, look at this. Like, they didn't even tell Trump yet. Look, he looks like a retard on national television. <laughs> Chris Hansen had it wait, the whole wait, time. Wait. What if this shit actually does work and Chris Hansen has <laughs> saved the from Corona? Well, then, Oni Onision, I guess that means you're going to jail, buddy. Yeah, I, I, I this guy so. is the greatest Jeez. fucking detective. Dude, he, he made a video on Twitter. He goes, today we're going after a predator called COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs>
What Onision's killstream appearance has done has cast doubt into the credibility of every single person who pussied out of the discussion, and created another layer of doubt that these people can't back up the shit they throw on a daily basis. That being said, Chris Hansen did respond one more time. Good evening and welcome once again to Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you are all well. First, I just want to take a moment to talk about our other investigation into the YouTube psycho Brad in Washington State. There's a lot of noise this week about an interview that was supposed to happen between me and Greg James or, or a debate of some sort. Well, let me just put it into perspective for you. I originally asked him for an interview about six months ago. He demanded $350,000. Then I went to Washington State, knocked on his door, and asked him for an interview. He didn't come to the door and say, Chris, it's a bad time. Chris, I'm making lunch for the kids. Chris, let's talk about it tomorrow. Set up a neutral location and we'll do the interview. No, what he did was call 911. The tape is right here on this channel and you can listen to that later. The Sheriff's Department came. I had a nice chat with them. They were surprised I hadn't been there earlier given the circumstances and everything that's been happening at that house. Fast forward four or five months, and all of a sudden, he's in this manic phase of demanding an interview, and it's got to be done, like, in the last five days. So he puts this out there. He wants to have me on a stream. I'm not going to do that live. If he wants to do an interview, I would really like to put some hard questions to him. In this statement, he talked about the fact that Onision denied his request to interview in the past, which in my opinion, does not give him a free pass to deny one here. You're the journalist trying to hunt down the truth here. Chris, if you were offered an interview that was previously unobtainable, you're expected to take it if you want to be looked at as a person who's credible. If you're satisfied with hearing half of a story and don't want to interview him, that's your own fucking thing. Except you say in this statement that you still want to interview him. In that case, what happened to the victims, Chris? This is in direct contradiction of when you said you wouldn't interview Onision because the accusers didn't want you to just two days prior. What changed? Suddenly we're saying fuck the victims? And all of a sudden he's in this manic phase of demanding an interview and it's gotta be done like in the last five days. What is with this last five days shit? You're the one who said let's do it Monday, weren't you? Why is it a problem now that he's pushing for you to do it live? And these allegations about grooming, sexual assault, human trafficking, child pornography, re-victimizing the victims. These are all various serious allegations that, that he faces. So he, anyway, he, I am back and forth with him uh, through Mike Morris, a, a lawyer who's affiliated with the show. And it goes from a live interview, we're not gonna do that, to a taped interview, and he says he would do it, but he's going to stream it live anyway. So this falls apart. He didn't want to really do an interview. He was trying to create an event, which is what he does. He lives in his own parallel universe. He's a narcissist, a predator. So then when it doesn't happen, he goes live with a bunch of other streamers, making it look like somehow I backed out or checked out. Here's the reality of the situation. When I went to knock on his door, he hid in the lower level of that house. He called 911. He didn't come to the door. He didn't address it. He didn't want to go face to face with a real reporter who would ask real questions. Now, why this manic move to do the interview now? Well, here's what I think. He's right there in Seattle, Tacoma, the ground zero in this country for COVID-19. Nobody's traveling right now. Nobody can get on a plane and do a face to face interview. So he knows that if he can make it look like he offered an interview to me and I didn't do it because it couldn't be face to face, which is the reality of it, or I couldn't do it and record it remotely without him live streaming it and making an absolute mockery of the whole thing, he knew I wouldn't do it. So then he can jump around to these different sites with different people who apparently, for whatever reason, support him in spite of everything, in spite of the evidence against him, in spite of the FBI investigation and in spite of the sheriff's investigation. So there you have it. Yeah, he didn't make it look like he offered an interview with you, Chris. He literally went and did that interview on someone else's channel, and it went great. If it was a bluff like you seem to think it was, well, you didn't call it and he followed through, so it really wasn't a bluff. If this was some elaborate plot to make you look bad, well, he won. You literally do. If he ever wants to do a real interview, answer real questions from a real reporter, 
I'm anxious to do it, happy to do it. But until then, it's not happening. We'll have more next week in our investigation of the YouTube psychopath in Washington State. If he wants to come on a real stream, give me a break. You're not a fucking investigator. You're not a journalist. You're practically washed up glorified paparazzi. Honestly, what I think happened was Onision was genuinely afraid a few months ago and did the smart thing by not getting on the show and talking to Chris. I think that the more this investigation has started to break down and the more people who have started to rightfully doubt Chris Hansen, the more Onision was inclined to believe that this is a fucking scam. Thus, here he is. Unless something swiftly changes, it's pretty clear clear to me that Chris Hansen is a scam artist, and fans who say shit like, we need to interview Onision when he's not prepared, are why most of the community has stopped taking you people seriously. Uh, dude, you might want to tell your lawyer mate that's me, that Onision has evidence against him. But for other shit, serious shit, false DMCA strikes are a serious crime. I'm Australian, we don't have felony misdemeanor split, but I'm willing to bet it's a felony. And Greg has laid hundreds, if not thousands of them. Also, unlike the UK and Australia, sentences for multiple crimes run consecutively as opposed to concurrently. Concurrently, meaning if you're charged with various crimes, get a two year, five year, seven year, or ten year. While incarcerated, you're doing time for all of those offences, so you're really only going to prison for ten years. America doesn't work like that. You serve each sentence back to back. That's how you end up with 1,800 year time sentences. The sheer magnitude of all the copyright fraud, if you were convicted on all counts, would put him in prison for long enough to give him a 50,000 year sentence. This is obviously not practical, but even if 1% of his copyright fraud victims alone press charges, he would either be in prison for a very long time or fined millions, which he would be unable to pay and as such is just a roundabout way of sticking him in prison. Oh yeah, and let's not forget that Lainey, uh, F off with any accusations of transphobia, she didn't, doesn't even want HRT, it's all a ploy, Greg groomed her into a cutesy boy for underage poon. It's also the result of heinous defeminization, which is one of Carrot Nano's psycho fetishes. Is messed up. And trust me, she will flip the cops are gonna hit her with, do you love your children? Do you want to be with them as they grow? Or are you gonna take the fall for him and end up in prison where they'll shove glass bottles up your hole and stomp on them? Said bottles likely filled with human shit, likely of a hepatitis slash HIV laden individual, unless you want your clitoris removed with a cheese grater and to never see your children for as long as you live, you'll cooperate with us and she will comply. Then when Greg is going to walk into the interrogator's office thinking he's the smartest guy in the room, but when they go from good cop to bad cop, he is going to piss his pants and try his hardest to throw her under the bus, and they'll make her aware of it. This guy is a massive thorn in the side of L.E. and in the danger to his area, but I know of at least 10 people in America who are actively working on targeting him and potentially his entire area, with coronavirus, demanding his immediate unconditional execution. People who in most cases are extremely unhinged, and I can see a cop making a left when he's supposed to make a right, drive out and shoot him the second his partner is off sick, as there are legitimate terrorist threats demanding his execution, and hundreds of thousands of people could be sick in the process. No, I don't have any further information on the identity of these people, I'm not part of it, but it's come up in more than one Discord server. Anyway, if you're living in Washington State, especially near him, you might just want to bring him to his house and off him, who will probably save a lot of people. I'm not off myself after reading that, to be honest. Bloody hell. Have, have a seat over there. I wanna make money. Have, have a seat over there. Wanna make money.